Hey, you guys. Hey there. Welcome to another video episode of Power Pearls podcast. My name is Karaga Warner, and I am the host of Power Pearls podcast. And today we are going to talk about a concept that I like to call morning moonlighting. And uh, this is a way that we can capitalize the first few hours of the day to carve out more time for creative pursuits or to start a little side hustle, because I know a lot of you guys are interested in that sort of thing. And I'll share how I used my early morning hours to build a side hustle myself, which eventually helped me get out of the cubicle. Now, this was inspired by some conversation that we had on the Patrons of Power Pearls Facebook group, and that's for patrons only of Patreon. So they're, it's a paid membership. And I asked you guys uh, a question. I asked you, well, I basically said, hey, what about some topics? And uh, and so I'm going to read some of the comments that came through, but the morning, the morning idea came from Marie, uh, one of the patrons, Marie, who said, how about a knitting Miracle Morning? So if any of you guys are familiar with the Miracle Morning book, then you immediately knew what I was talking about. Um, It's a very popular book and now amazingly huge community started by, uh, the book was written by Hal Elrod and uh, the community is his, it's his community as well. So, but anyway, uh, so this was sort of inspired by Marie's suggestion for the whole morning routine thing. And a couple of other comments that came through about uh, some of you having, you know, just struggling, finding time to get it all done. Uh, So this, you know, this is part one. I decided it's got to be a couple, you know, two parts. I don't know, maybe it it can be a series. But part one, which is the why, you know, why a morning routine, you know, and how it can literally help you create more time. You just need to get out of bed earlier. That's what it is. I mean, we all have 24 hours in a day, as they say. However, uh, you know, if you can go to bed a little bit earlier, an hour earlier, get up an hour earlier, there are lots of crafty ways to, uh, to get things done. So in this episode, I'm going to share the benefits. And then in part two, I'll actually share the morning tools. Uh, this, the, these, are, these are the support uh, r- tools and resources to help you stay on track. Um, they can be anything from digital planners, written systems. Ch- um, I recently heard of something called the chalkboard method. Um, I'm listening to this new podcast called um, uh, Boss... Uh, something boss. Oh my gosh. It's in my phone. I'll have to let you guys know. Uh, I'll have to look it up when, when, when we, when we're chatting in the comments here. Um, but, uh, being boss, it's right here. Look, it's right here on my phone. Being boss, being boss. And anyway, podcasts, listening to podcasts in the morning and all other kinds of nurturing things. But this is going to be the benefits of why you you would want to start a morning routine. And then part two will be the tools. And then also creating affirmations. Like I write affirmations all over the place and put them on cards. You want to make things visual. So it's in your face. (laughs) That's what it comes down to. Um, So, all right. So I think it's time to get into the sharing and then I'm going to start things off by asking you guys a quick question. So uh, if you can hear me, um, say, I can hear you. Say, you sound great. All is, all is well uh, with the microphone. I always like to just make sure, but, but I'm sure that it, by now, uh, if, I, if you couldn't hear me and you just saw moving lips, you would have been letting me know. So uh, all right, so let's jump in here. So before I dive into today's topic, I would be so grateful, number one, if you could take a few moments and uh, share, share this with your friends on Facebook. I'm, I know that we all have those knitting friends. So just let them know that you're watching this really super cool video that, th- that this live video that they should uh, chime in on every single Friday. And, and then just say, Hey, where are you guys? You know, where are you from? Where are you viewing from? Or just say, Hey, my, you know, I'm here and I'm loving it. Um, so this is awesome. So I see a bunch of you guys 
uh, I'm going to say hello. Some new, I see some new, some new faces here. So uh, there's Bev. Hello, Bev. Uh, Bev has been around for a while now, and I just had a conversation yesterday with Bev. We are meeting. I'm, I'm so excited that we're actually going to get together and meet. This is awesome. Um, Jenny. Uh, Jenny says, hey, it's rainy here in Philly. Good day to knit. Oh my gosh, it so is a good day. Here it's sunny. Uh, but uh, yesterday, I think yesterday, yeah, yesterday was a little bit cloudy and really, really humid. And today it's gorgeous. Um, so, oh, hey, Joy is here. Uh, Indiana, fellow Hoosier. Awesome. Well, I'm a Hoosier uh, transplant. Is that the right way to say it? I'm a Jersey girl at heart. <laughs> it's where I grew up. I'm from the New York. I'm from New York originally and uh, moved here about seven years ago. And it's great. I, I think life is uh, uh, it's a simple life, you know, where we live and it's nice. Uh, it's just nice, nice place to, to bring up a family. Uh, let's see. So we have um, Al Alina. Alina, I hope I said that right. Good. Alina, you can hear me well. Uh, Jennifer, hello. Uh, we have two. We have a Jenny and a Jennifer, just to be clear. Kim is here. Hey, Kim, how are you? And Tammy. Hello, Tammy. Nice to see you today. And I think we can get started. You, I know more of you guys are flooding into the into the room. So as soon as you come on in, be, be you know, just um, feel free to uh, uh, say, hey, hi, hey, everyone. This is where I'm viewing from. And, and then I'm going to go get started. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys uh, a question just to start it all off because it's so much fun. And then that gives me a few little breaks to take some water, you know, some water breaks. <laughs> so here it is in the comments. Yes or no. I use the first few hours of the day to work on creative or business pursuits, or maybe you do both. So I'd love to know, simple, yes or no. And if it's a no, why not? If it's a no, are you not a morning person? So anyway, have fun with this and jump into the comments. Sorry for the gurgling noises there at the <laughs> water bottle. So Marie, hello, Marie just popped in here. So uh, Marie, you know, you and you are the one that inspired, well, you and a few of the other gals, um, all you guys inspire me. But you mentioned the Knitting Miracle Morning, Marie. And so we're going to be talking about, you know, we're going to be talking about the morning routine things. Can't help myself. And I can't speak enough about the value of the morning. I absolutely think it is the most magical time. And I think that it's not just because I think it is. I, it absolutely is. It's not just sort of, oh, it's so nice. And uh, there's something very, uh, I'll use the word sacred here. I really think that. So, and you know, my gosh, you get so much, so much done. There's so much mind space, there's so much you, you can concentrate more. Anyway, we'll get into it. So let's see. So uh, Marie is, yes, Marie is a morning person. We already know that because I think that's where we met, right, Marie? In the morning group, the morning, uh, Hal's, Hal Elrod's, uh, the morning, the Miracle Morning community. Um, let's see. So I'm, I'm going to back up here. So, uh, so Bev says yes. Awesome. And I think that means morning routine, right? Because I think I asked uh, this after, uh, didn't see your response until after I asked the question. Marie, uh, Kim, Kim is yes. Uh, Tammy says, no, <laughs> honestly, just lazy. LOL. No, you know, it's fine. And it, and if it doesn't, if a morning routine is just not in, that's not the chapter of your life that you're in, or for whatever reason, maybe you, um, you, you have a different type of process. Um, but this is just something that I think can be really valuable for those of you who are trying to find that time capsule, if you will, to pursue other, other things. Uh, and if you struggle, you know, struggle with the daily schedule, like if you have that full-time job and you have the kids and all that stuff, which is uh, something that Cynthia, uh, Cynthia, who is also a patron and uh, one of, she's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, client, coaching client. And she struggles with this because she's a teacher. She's got small kids. She's getting ready to go back to school in a month or so. And she's got to be 
out the door by six. And that's a challenge, especially for a morning routine. So I have some ideas for you. I have some ideas for you, Cynthia. So I don't see you in, in the room. Maybe you are, but you're just lurking. Uh, or I will, uh, I do hope you watch or listen. Yeah, watch and listen to the replay because many of these, most of these videos, by the way, become the audio only version of Power Pearls podcast for those of you who like to listen on the go and while you're doing the dishes and while you're exercising and all that stuff. Um, so Marie, yes, Marie is a morning person. Jennifer says no, because I read and do my Bible study first thing, then work time. Well, you know, um, isn't, I mean, technically that's kind of like your, your morning routine. You get up and you do, so you're not going to do your creative pursuits, but, and I'll get into that in a few minutes, but it doesn't have to necessarily be creative. Uh, when you get, have a morning routine, you can have kind of like the nurturing time and then the creative and then the reading and then the workout. But my question obviously was the creative or business. And Joy says, no. <laughs> Ta hashtag toddler life. That's good. That's good. Uh, Kim says, I do a combo of gathering my thoughts, reading some scripture, planning, and catching up on Ravelry. Well, good. And I would say that, you know, all of this really is creative when you think about it. These are creative pursuits. Um, Jenny says, no, too busy with the kids. I have what I like to call my late night sessions of knitting. So Jenny, um, do you just sort of, you get out of bed when you're when you, when you wake up and you move, you just kind of get get going with the kids and breakfast, um, and if you say that you like you like to call your late night knitting set you you like to call my late nights you have a late night session of knitting sorry I couldn't get that out, um, and hey if that works awesome because you know you could have a morning routine at night just call it your nighttime routine or whatever this kind of time that you can actually find that space and that's the key okay. But I have to say, there really is something very unique about a morning routine. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Paula, hey, how are you? Paula from Florida. So Tammy says, I'm willing to make changes to get in a morning routine. All right. Well, then you're in the right place, Tammy. We're going to make it happen. Elaine says, wow, I finally made it live. Hey, all. Oh, Elaine. Wow. So Elaine has been uh, traveling. Uh, actually, you've been living in, you were living in Brazil for a while, I think, and teaching. So Elaine is back. Yay. And boy, you were so dedicated because you would say you're listening on, on the road or wherever you were going, you were listening to the audio. So that's very cool. Um, and then, uh, so we have Jennifer says, oh yes, well, in that case, I totally have a morning routine up at 6.15 every day. So yes, I think that's, all of the all of the above is creative. Uh, if we're if we're you know doing something that's to nurture our spiritual life, uh, creative. I mean, it all blends, doesn't it? All comes together. Danielle says, "I'm sorry, I'm late. I was taking uh, a knitters taking a knitters podcast listener survey. Nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you too, Danielle. And I'm really happy that you made it today. And then Leslie says, "Okay, video not working for me. Oh, bummer." Um, well, I don't know if you're still there, Leslie. I know you've been having trouble lately, and I hope you can um, jump back on. Okay, so thanks for uh, having some fun at the beginning of this video. It's always nice to just break that ice. So for those of you that uh, are joining, have just joined, here's my formal introduction. So my name is Kara Gott Warner, and I'm the host of Power Pearls podcast, designer, coach, illustrator, editor, and I am your ultimate cheerleader, as I always say, on your yarn crafting path. And you can catch me here every Friday on the Power Pearls Facebook page for this live edition of Power Pearls podcast. All right, you guys, so let's dive in. Let's dive in, shall we? So yesterday I asked the Patreon community. So I have a Facebook group that is for patrons only. I asked you a bunch of questions lately. And one of them was, should we get rid of the Patreon group? But that's a whole other conversation. And I think it may have to happen with you guys in Patreon, in the Facebook group. Uh, but uh, now I'm starting to think that I should keep the group because boy, we've been having some great conversations over there. Uh, but I asked you just yesterday, I basically said, 
uh, you know, I said, Hey, I need some help with topic suggestions, Can, you know, because, uh, the last, like last week I was all over the place. If you guys watched me, I just couldn't come up with a strategy for, uh, I was like, a, you're going down rabbit holes like crazy. So, uh, so this episode today, uh, is inspired by some of the comments that came through. So I would love to share them with you. Okay. So I'm going to start with Leslie. Uh, I'm sorry, Leslie. I just looked down at the comments and saw your name, Leslie. Sorry. Uh, but Leslie, you had some, you had a really, really funny, 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 funny comment, uh, in there. And so I'd love to share that. Um, so I think I might have to go back, uh, to yours because I was going to start with, I was going to start with Cynthia. But I think what I'm going to do, since I happen to say hello to you, Cynthia, you had, I mean, um, uh, Leslie, you had some funny, uh, uh, some funny things to say. So let's see. So I'm going to go back to the beginning because a whole bunch came through. If I can find you. Um, well, I guess I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go back to that. So I'm sorry. That kind of that that messed up my flow just a little bit. So sorry about that, you guys. So let me let me go back to your some of your comments at the end, Leslie, because they were fun. Um, but Cynthia said, "I would love to hear something on how to find time in the schedule of a busy mom and a full time worker to do design work." While I'm enjoying working on my first pattern and designs now, as a teacher, I will return to work next month, and I am freaking out about how to do something once I'm back in the swing of that life. So in response to this, Marie uh, said, suggested a knitting miracle morning, which I had mentioned just a little bit ago. Uh, and if, and as I said, if any of you know the book and the community, it was started by Hal Elrod, who is the author and the uh, lead of this community. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to say there must be 40,000 members in this uh, in this group. And it's a Facebook group and it's free. So anybody can join. If you are inspired to start a morning routine and Tammy, uh, hint, hint, you might want to check it out. I used to be very active in the group and I actually started this accountability thing every night. And I, do you remember that Marie? Cause I know you were in the group and he said, create these banners every single night. I called it check in time, everybody, because there's one thing that you do in this group. It's encouraged to have accountability partners to help you in the morning so that you can, uh, get on, get up on time and you text each other or, or whatever, whatever you, you might want to do to help kick each other in the butt. And, and so a lot of people in the group were having a tough time finding accountability partners. So I was sort of becoming that accountability partner for everybody. And I posted the check-in time and I said, okay, check. And I would say, I'm getting up at 5 a.m., see it in the morning. And then you had to check in, in the comments. And so that would be kind of fun. Maybe we need to do that here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm putting pressure on myself again for something. It sounds like fun right now, but anyway, it's, it kind of is sparking something. Who knows, right? So anyway, uh, in, in the Miracle Morning, Hal talks about something called SAVERS. It's actually an acronym. So I'll tell you what this is. Okay. So it's S, so SAVERS. S stands for silence. A stands for affirmation. V stands for visualization. So like a visualization practice, silence practice. Uh, exercise is E, R is reading and S is scribing, like journal writing. And so you usually, the, the idea is you take the first hour or you take, let's say you get up one hour before you have to get up. <laughs> just, just one hour before you have to get up. And you do each of these savers. And then the quick version of this, you do like each saver for six minutes. If I, I think I'm correct about that, Marie. Um, but you can do the condensed version and do like, like a little mini one. So there's never an excuse for not doing your, your savers as Hal calls them. So as I said, it's the concept is uh, that you get up one hour before you need to. Now this is the sweet spot. Okay. According to the miracle morning pro approach, and I think it is as well. And I just want to say, Cynthia, if you're listening, but I know if you're not here now, again, the replay, you will be listening because in your case, I know this may not be sustainable because I, I had mentioned this in the comments and, uh, you know, it may not be sustainable because Cynthia, Cynthia has to get up at, at five, just to start getting ready for work. 
when she starts school again uh, as a teacher. And then uh, she has to be out the door by six. So getting up at 4 a.m. may be a stretch. I mean, I actually get up at like 4.30. Sometimes I get up at four, but that means that I have to get to bed even earlier and have to be much more proactive the night before because it's not worth getting up early if you're going to hit a brick wall and you're going to be tired. I know that a lot of people in that group, uh, in the Miracle Morning group, say take naps. but I And I think naps are great. I think our body, if we need them sometimes, we should take them. But if you really feel yourself dragging and you hit a wall, like you really feel like that feeling of hitting a wall and going against a grain, it means you probably didn't get enough sleep the night before. So sleep is is important, okay? So I'll just start there by saying, before I go any further, sleep is absolutely necessary. But here's a thought for you, Cynthia. So how about carving out time on a Saturday and a Sunday or both, you know, both or maybe one, one morning. So instead of, you know, sleeping in, you know, I mean, maybe you sleep in a little bit longer um, than you normally would when you need to get up, but maybe always get up the same time. So uh, this would literally, literally be like you're creating a part-time job on the weekend, like, and that's your business, right? So instead of sleeping in, be, be proactive and, you know, get up at the same time that you normally would for, for school every single morning, including the weekends and use two to three hours in the morning to work on your business. And this is what I do. Like this is, um, this is my standard. I'm usually three hours because as part of my business plan, it's exercising too. Okay. So I actually build that in. And so maybe you want to exercise at a different time. So maybe you just need an hour or two and you want to focus in, really hone in, be ninja focused, as I like to say from time to time on just the business or, or just nurturing. Maybe it's just meditation or prayer, right? Um, and so, uh, that's a way to, to really get that time in and be very calculated about it. And, uh, so when, you know, Cynthia, by the time the kids get up, you're going to feel accomplished because you're going to get like a day's work. And that's the thing that's really amazing about the morning. You actually get, um, because you're so, uh, you're so plugged in, you're so able to focus in the early, early time of the day, the early hours that you can just, you're not distracted by, by anything. Um, and you, you just, you're just much more able to really concentrate. So you can literally get, a day's worth of work done in three hours, if you put your mind to it, Com- you know, compared to the, the time you, you have to clock in at work or sit behind your desk when you have a flurry of people coming into your office, or if you're a stay-at-home mom, your kids, or if you're retired, like Leslie uh, you, you says her husband, <laughs> she wants to find something to what smack your husband with, <laughs> something funny like that in the comments, but I can't seem to find it right now. But Leslie, if you want to copy and paste what you said, if you're still here, that would be so cool and I'll pop it up on screen. How's that? That'll be that'll be a lot easier for me. All right. So wouldn't it be cool if you could get all this work done before the rest of the world wakes up? So awesome. So uh, what you decide, what you decide to do with your time is up to you, but guard it and use it wisely because... Um, you know, because you have this energy and more willpower and the ability to concentrate. So now I'm going to go into the five benefits of waking up early. So do you guys have any questions at this point? I, uh, let's see. <laughs> so, so Leslie says, darn, you're frozen. So hopefully I'm not missing too much. So Leslie, if you are, I'll just reiterate this again. So if you want to pop in, pop on screen, um, in the comments, I should say, and I'll pop it on screen, your comments, God, the funny comment you made about your husband. Um, Jenny says the mornings are not good for me, but nights are better. Okay. So that was answering what I had said before. Okay. So you guys, I'm going to go right in to these five benefits of why it's great to start a morning routine. And again, this is what I do. And this is what I, what I, what I implemented in a very ninja focused way when I was still working uh, at creative knitting, because that was my day job, you know, and I worked eight to five. So I had to be behind a desk. And, um, so that made me even more proactive in in, on getting up and, and having this morning routine. I still do but it takes, it's more work because I don't have a boss. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm, I'm the boss, right? Well, actually you guys are the boss, right? Um, 
but anyway, so let's get into those five benefits. So number one is it's protected time, right? So the rest of the world is sleeping. So that means that you won't be distracted by interruptions. Now, if you are, you know, if you have small kids or you have an animal, um, or maybe you have a husband or someone that does like to get up early, it's still quieter in the morning. Um, and so maybe, um, maybe it is a tough time, but I think in the, in general, most people in the morning, even if there is a significant other, other in the house, usually I think that we were kind of in this different kind of mind space when we first wake up in the morning. So um, maybe it's about negotiating, hey, I'm going to be in my special space reading and crafting and, you know, journaling, whatever, you know. And then number two is you gain confidence that you'll get, you, you'll gain confidence because you'll get more done. Okay. You'll get more done than most of the world. I mean, think about it. Um, you'll be able to eat your frogs, so to speak. You're, if you've heard me talk about Brian Tracy and his book, Eat That Frog, which I love. And you guys that are my, uh, my one-on-one -on -one clients, you know, <laughs> I talk about that book. It's what I base a lot of my practice on. Uh, but if you, but think about that. I mean, if you get up in the, in the morning, and you use the first hour even, and you say, this is going to be business only. And I'm going to eat my frog. I'm going to eat the ugliest and the biggest frog that I have on my list. Think about that every day. There's something in the pipeline towards the success of that business or the success of whatever. It's a personal goal. It's maybe you're, you want to just non-negotiable time for, for knitting or whatever. Pers it can be personal, it can be business. But think about how by doing this, you're creating a launch pad that's going to carry you. This one hour is going to carry you through the rest of the day. One hour for eight hours of happiness, <laughs> of excitement, of good vibes. And Diana, Diane says, 100% agree. All right. So number three, are you guys ready? Number three, you have more energy the first few hours of the day. Uh, that's a given. I mean, we all know that. So that's not, that's not like made up stuff. If you are, if you don't have energy, maybe you have to adjust your clock, so to speak. Don't go to bed so late and don't make yourself get up so early. My sweet spot is seven hours. I can sometimes get by on six and a half. Like la this morning, I, but it's, you have to find it. Okay. You have to find it yourself. I woke up it's at 445 this morning and I feel great. I mean, I did, didn't need a nap. I don't, I don't, I don't crash. I didn't crash. Uh, I don't usually crash. I don't usually feel like I need a nap. Um, and, uh, I think it's because I do make sure that I get the, the sleep. So I was in bed by 930. So let me see. 930. Yeah. Give or take. So close enough to sit, like I said, six, between six and a half to seven hours is my, is my sweet spot. Okay. So number four, your mind is clear of clutter and you can perform at your very best. This is absolutely true. And I think that science and studies have shown this. You wake up in the morning and, and think about this the next time. Maybe you just, you, you cause you already know, you probably know this. Uh, but you, maybe you don't really think about it. You wake up in the morning and you're not worried about certain things that you might be worried about later in the day as things flood through your mind and activities arise because you're just getting up. There's no, you don't have that kind of flood of, of noise, <laughs> so to speak, coming into your brain. So you, you're, cl it's clear, you know, you're clear. It's like you're a blank chalkboard. <laughs> and whatever you want to write on that chalkboard is totally up to you. So I'm sorry, I got to shift a little bit because my leg is asleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I sit on this squeaky, squeaky stool. Do you guys hear that? So sorry. Oh my gosh. It is, I got to get a new stool. It's a cool looking stool, but boy, it is so super squeaky. Um, and so Diane says, I really need to try this. Sounds like a very great idea. Yeah. Try it. So, um, okay. So let's see. Number five, this is the final one. There are so many more, but like I said, this is going to be a, a two part series. It might turn into a three part series, but you know what? Right now I know that part two, I'm going to talk all about the tools that you can use the morning tools. Number five in the benefits is less distractions, less interruptions at 5am. Wouldn't you say, unless 
you create them for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you decide that as soon as you jump on your computer, you turn on your email, you turn on Facebook, you turn on all this stuff. If you are disciplined enough. And some people hate that word, but it really does come down to it. You have to decide. You have to do that work. If you want to see some uh, improvement and, and you have to apply effort. How's that? Discipline. Maybe let's call it effort. You have to apply energy. Actually, I like the word energy a little bit better. Uh, so applying the energy in the direction of what it is that you want to achieve is, um, you know, it is a really, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really important thing to, to really enforce on yourself. But usually, you know, it, it, as far as the outside interruptions, your boss isn't probably not going to be knocking on your bedroom door or wherever you are at 5 a.m. in the morning. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen, right? So you can be sure that you're going to be you're going to be okay at, at whatever time you wake up. So those are the benefits, you guys. Those are the benefits. And uh, so before I move on to the next topic, I'm going to uh, say hello to Shirley. Hi, Shirley. And Jenny says, and just kind of go through, if, if you guys have any questions, what do you think of these? First of all, do you like these? What do you think of these benefits? Are these enticing you? Uh, are there some new believers in the morning, the morning idea of getting things done? Jump in the comments and uh, let me know. Let everybody else know. And if you are a morning practitioner, as I like to say, Marie, hello, I haven't heard from you. Um, how has it transformed your life? I would love it if you could jump into the comments because you, you will give a gift to somebody else right now. You'll share some inspiration. So hopefully that person that, you know, someone else will want to start, you know, maybe tomorrow. And so Jenny says, when I was working full time before the kids, I was most productive in the mornings. Now I have less distractions at night. Yeah. So you guys, um, can apply these, uh, these ideas, these concepts to a different time of the day. Uh, Jenny, I think, you know, it goes either way. I'm not going to say that most people are, it's that, that most people are better in the morning. I think, I think that it, it depends on you. I know for myself, the morning is where it's at because <clears throat> after I do the nurturing things, the things that I'll tell you how I, I'll just go through, I was going to go into this next, but what do I do? Okay. So what is my morning look like? You guys ready? You want to hear that? Okay. And this is how I base every morning. And this is how I've, I've always, for years, even while I was working full time at Creative Knitting. So I always get up and I do something that I like to call fun first. The first thing, you know, I don't jump into email. I don't go, oh my gosh, I got to work on this thing. I mean, I'm half asleep. So what my favorite thing to do is get up and make my coffee. That's it. That coffee is a motivator. Um, you know, I go back and forth with coffee, uh, you know, detoxing and, you know, not having it because I, I try to give my body a break, but I love it. And it is a motivator for me. I'm so sorry, but I can't help it. I'm going to, I'm going to be an advocate for coffee. <laughs> um, so I get up, I have my coffee and while I'm making it, of course I'm moving. So I'm getting, you know, I'm waking up, I'm waking up, I'm waking up. And then I go upstairs. I have a set, you know, my studio where I work is also a room where I have a corner and it's where I have a chair and a, and a little table and I have affirmation cards and I have my journal and I have a little ottoman so I can put my feet up. It's so sweet. I, I think I've posted, I'll have to post a picture in the comments later on for you guys or in, as in post as you can see my, my little spot in the morning. And it's so nice. I love it. And so you guys, you can make this space anywhere in your house. It doesn't have to be a separate room. And so I, I read. That's the first thing that I do while I'm sipping my coffee. I read. Because if I were to do email or get into work and I was drinking my coffee, my coffee would get cold before I finished it because I'd get like sucked into email. So I read and I sip my coffee and I usually read spiritual books and, and, you know, I read about meditation and, and that sort of thing. And it really inspires me. And then I actually meditate after my coffee's done though. Uh, I journal a little bit, I knit. And then after that, 
I do go on the computer and I spend, um, it's either I'll go on the computer and I'll, I'll engage with you guys early in the morning on Facebook. I'll do mostly like group interaction stuff. Um, I don't do email in the morning. I just don't. But I also, if I have a busy day or I have appointments like with clients, what I'll do after I'm done my coffee, I'm done with reading, I'm done with some knitting and nurture time in that respect, I get up, I put my workout clothes on and I go for a run before sunrise. Oh, it's the best. And then in the winter, I'll go to the gym because it's just going to be too early at, you know, five in the morning. It's too dark. I mean, not too early. No, I take that back. It'll be too dark. So that's my, that's, a, that's the gist of my routine. So Danielle says, I'm happier and healthier physically and mentally by be, becoming a morning person. Um, yes. So Bev says, morning gives me permission to ignore tasks that might wake others. Uh, knitting, reading, and devotions are all quiet endeavors that don't bother anyone. Absolutely. And Shirley says, coffee first, work later. <laughs> yes. Uh, Marie again says, the feeling of accomplishment I get is unbeatable. That's a really good word, unbeatable. Uh, and preps me for the rest of the day. Absolutely. And you know, like I said, some launch pad. That's a great word, isn't it? And then hello, Christy. Um, nice to see you. And Marie also says, being a morning person has made me more productive and happier in my life. Yes. So you guys, this is, this is pretty cool. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit and I hope you, you know, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the benefits and that inspired you. And, uh, and then, uh, the, you know, the next time I jump on here, I'll be talking about the tools, the morning tools. Hey, Hey, Troy. So, all right. So you guys, uh, if you're interested, I want to sh- share this. Uh, I've been talking about these discovery sessions. So if you wanted to schedule a free discovery session, so this is if you're serious, you guys, you're serious about moving the needle on your design business, or you want to start, right? You want to start a design business. um, So you can sign up for this free session. So it's business coaching and lifestyle. So business and lifestyle coaching. Because you know what? It all blends together, doesn't it? But if you're serious, if you want to make it happen, I'm here to help you. So uh, if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash free strategy session, and then you'll go to my page. It's going to show you business, the business and lifestyle coaching for creatives program. It's going to talk all about it. And then you can press there's a button that can, um, takes you to another page where you can sign up for the free session. And so this is all about learning how to live a creative and holistically balanced life, uh, that also converges. So it's life and business that converges creativity and mindful living. So who doesn't want that you guys? So go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash free strategy session. And that's all one word. Okay, you guys. So I hope you'll take me up on that. It's a great opportunity. Seriously. So that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, you guys. So I'm going to leave you with a quote, though. Don't go yet. Don't go because this is the best part. So you here it is you and I don't know who said this. You don't have time for everything. But you do have time for the most important things. So go out there and make it happen, you guys. And I hope that you implement a morning routine or you just try to wake up early one morning, have some coffee or whatever beverage of choice you like, and do something that excites you. That's what it's all about. It's about being excited. This is not a chore. This shouldn't feel forced. But you know what? If you want to achieve something, apply that effort to make that happen too. But you're going to enjoy it. Like that's the thing about it. The more a morning routine can be such a joyful time. All right, you guys. So have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the weekend. And I'll see you next week. All right. Bye.